podcast four, Dispelling the Myth that Independent Physicians are Leaving Independent Practices for Hospital Employment. So Larry, is it true that independent physicians are becoming employed by hospitals in record numbers? Uh, You know, for the first time in the U.S. back in April, it was announced that employed physicians outnumbered self-employed independent physicians in a study that was released by the American Medical Association. But let's, let's set that aside for a moment, which the AMA, by the way, deemed a milestone, as if this were an accomplishment. It was based on a very small sampling of doctors. The survey actually represented 3,500 physicians, which only 36% of those actually responded to the survey, equaling a total of 1,260 doctors, representing over a million doctors in America, a statistical stretch at best. So, and then other reports say that one in three physicians are independent today. But this survey indicated that now over 50% of independent of phys- or physicians were owned and employed by large health systems. Uh, but regardless of the rate that um, we're looking at these numbers, physicians are forgoing uh, independence for steady paychecks. And that trend is not healthy for doctors. It's not healthy for patients, and it's not healthy for America. So does it matter to a patient that the physician is independent or or hospital employed? Yeah. You know, when hospitals or even private equity groups buy up docs, costs skyrocket, quality goes down, and even more important, if the hospital doing the acquiring is nonprofit, communities suffer financial harm because the taxes that the independent practice has paid come off the tax rolls. But really, the the difference for a patient, what does it matter to a patient, is they're going to pay a much higher out-of-pocket cost for not only primary services, but specialist care and even all ancillary services if those entities are owned by a hospital because they have attached what they call a facility fee. And that can be as much as four, five, six, seven times what the normal rate would be. Wow. So how is IPN assisting physicians to remain independent practitioners? April, you want to talk about that for a minute? Well, I think in general, IPN provides the tools and the resources to help them stay independent or to transition to an independent practice. So we have a lot of physicians that are either new to the area or they were employed and then they become an independent practitioner. And so we, we hook them up with different resources like revenue cycle management uh, for billing, credentialing to get them onboarded with the different payers and things of that nature. Uh, we definitely help them with their contractual relationship to ensure that they get a, a fair and decent reimbursement in the market that we currently exist in. But we also provide shared savings contracts. I think we've spoken about before where our physicians actually incur some bonus dollars by keeping the total medical costs down and the quality improved. So we really act as that guidance to help them to those tools and resources. And you know, let's go back to the uh, dispelling the myth for a minute. You know, Merritt Hawkins, a big healthcare survey group, did a survey in April of this year and reported that hospitals make on average $2.4 $2.4 million per year net for every physician that they own and or that they employ. No wonder they want to and want to and continue to can afford to, to purchase doctors. It's all about the money. But then what happens in, in a two to three year period, physicians get disenchanted with their contract. The hospital starts turning the pressure up on as far as what they're requiring from the doctor on not only performance, but quality and, uh, and uh, uh, quality. quality and revenue. And, quantity. and, and <laughs> then the physicians find themselves, they want to get out, and then they find themselves under a non-compete where if they do get out, they have to either give up their practice, leave their patients, and start all over somewhere else, or just stay in. So it's just a, a bad entire circle of what's going on. But you know, let's go back to that survey for a minute when it mentioned that uh, from 2012 to 2019, physicians were dropping out and joining hospitals at a massive rate. Well, in reality, all that activity happened from 2012 to 2014. 
from 2014 to 2019, there has been a direct shift in physicians actually leaving the hospital and going back into private practice. So the, it's, it's not a bad message, but the message, why would a hospital want a doctor to know that you have other, any other alternative than to be employed by me? And I can tell you yeah. from the physicians that join our network that have left employment, it's been um, interesting to learn some of the challenges that they faced under that employment. Uh, one physician recently told me they she had to report to 16 different administrative people within the hospital organization. Not one of them was clinical, but they were all basically requiring her to make sure she referred every patient within their walls, nothing outside. And again, that's not the best care of the patient. Maybe something is, maybe the specialist is closer to that patient's home as opposed to that hospital entity or something. So she just became, I, we like to say the honeymoon is over after the first couple of years, but uh, I think in the first year she realized the honeymoon was definitely over and she's so happy. In the first eight months being an independent provider, she's guiding her own future and her patients are happier, she's happier. It's just such a better system. There was a group in North Carolina, an 88 physician group in North Carolina recently who terminated from the Atrium Health System up there, a very large system in northern North Carolina, stating, and they stated the reason why, we can better control how we practice medicine and our destiny as being an independent physician. And then there was another 42 physician group in southern North Carolina left the Novant Health System, and they cited that their reason was the need to make health care more affordable. And then there was another large group in Wisconsin that left the Theta Care Major Health System, and they stated, quote, a desire to have more control over all aspects of their practice. So there, you know, when physicians, first of all, the reason that they look at um, employment is to get out of the pay or rat race in dealing with the insurance companies. And they feel that they get boxed in, they get shut out of narrow networks, and many other things that they lose. If they're a specialist, they lose referrals to the hospital owned specialist, and, and all those kind of things. But in reality, the myth is really broken because there is not a mass exodus today of physicians leaving independent practice and going into the hospital. It's just the opposite. So, Larry, how would you summarize this message? Numbers only tell part of the story. The rest of the story is that independence is not a thing of the past, but rather it is the future. And independent physicians are the solution to spiraling out of control health care costs. Great. Well, thank you both so much.